So hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to discuss uh, stories of cross-border business. And I am your moderator, Diksha Datta. I work with Usha Berlin. This is an initiative by the Berlin Senate. And we work towards um, connecting startup ecosystems of Berlin with Asia. And do, we do this with the help of a lot of partners. And one of the strong partners, strongest partners rather is NPAC. So we have Jan today with us. And uh, also Ginsep is one of our uh, very friendly partners in Germany here. So we have Eileen from Ginsep. And uh, we are going to cover different facets of how you can really expand from um, Asia to Berlin or Germany or from or vice versa. And if you're going to do that, what should be your route and how can we help you here in this? So um, I'm going to start with a very open question for both our panelists, um, which is that tell us about, you know, probably start with Jan. So Jan, what is your role with um, in which you actually help startups from Germany to expand to Asia or vice versa? And what are the top three ways by which you would do that? Mm, yeah, thank you so much, Diksha. And uh, yeah, pleasure being here. You know? um, yeah, so ex expanding, right? So uh, be being a business um, or, or especially our focus is on, on startups, no? uh, tech startups to expand in, the, in, in both directions. Um, um, so I would say before even starting what we can do the question is is the startup ready in order to expand no that is probably the first the first question that 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 each startup has to answer for themselves as in um, what does it mean to to expand to a new market um, which market so let's take the perspective of expanding to asia so what is asia no there is not one asia there are at least four or five of asias uh, china india southeast asia and then probably you take uh, japan or south korea as ex extra units so there is no expanding to asia so uh, first uh, really think where do you want to go um, and then do you have the, are you ready for it? No, is the, is the company ready? What does it mean to expand to a new market? Um, it needs a certain financial um, capacity to do so. Um, and then we are kind of like the first right partner as a touch point. So for example, what we do is we organize delegation trips um, annually um, as part of Asia Berlin, uh, as Diksha mentioned. So, and we, we these trips are one week, let's say scouting trips. And we have a trip to India, we have a trip to um, to China, we have a trip to Southeast Asia. Um, and, and that's kind of like a scouting trip in order to test the waters. So, so what is happening there is, it's kind of like a deep dive into the local ecosystem. And again, it's the city ecosystem. So usually we do multiple stops. So let's say it's India, then it's, it's usually two cities in India and China, it's two or three cities in China. So that you really understand it, it's not just about the country, but then it's also about the city, the, the local startup ecosystem. What are the conditions there? Um, have um, on the ground meetings to, to understand what it would mean to, to I, A, open a business, uh, open a, uh, like an office, but also have first conversations with business partners. Um, so, so actually, to after the trip, have a good estimate of what what how it would look like, and is it something that we want to do, or or is and we have to further investigate, or maybe something we consider and we have to further investigate. Yeah. 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 So kind of like delegation trip as a first touch point. Okay. So I'm sure we'll expand into further activities with more questions that we will have. And then we have Eileen Trenkman, who works with German Indian Startup Association and also uh, German Indian Startup Exchange Program and German Startup Association. I mixed the two. And Eileen, tell us about your role and how do you work with startups from India and Germany? Yes. Um, good morning, Diksha. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so yeah, the German Startup Association is implementing the German Indian Startup Exchange Program, um, which is supported by the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy. Um, I think we work pretty similar to uh, Asia Berlin or what NPEC is doing. 
Um, first of all, we do provide a lot of information on how to enter the Indian or the German market. So we support German and Indian startups to enter the respective other market. Uh, we do have a blog where we share information. Um, we, 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 we host a lot of events where we also share information on um, the Indian and the German market and the Indian German startups ecosystem then um, we also have created a huge network of experts uh, which is called the GINSEP ambassador network um, these are individuals but also organizations and we have created an interactive map where every uh, startup German or Indian startup can um, based on a, on a on a set of criteria select an expert um, from India and Germany and those experts uh, will support the uh, startup startups then um, with their respective question and last but not least we also host delegation trips we have already done one this year for Indian startups to Germany and are going to do two more this year um, with partners um, but also we do a lot of other workshops um, together with partners um, we do pitching events where we um, host pitches for Indian or German startups and bring them together with corporate with investors uh, we also do the individual matchmaking. So, for instance, we have supported quite a lot of startups to enter the Bosch Accelerator program in India and also German startups. So these are some of the ways um, we support. Yeah. Okay, great. great. So there are a lot of um, similarities in, 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 the way, in the way you approach startups. And both of you mentioned delegation trips pretty much um, there. So um, I think one of the natural questions that comes to mind is that how do you really um, engage? Okay, I see that Karina is here, so I can add her, it seems. Yay. Ah, hello. I, I'm super sorry. I was stuck in the wrong session. No, you have a, what do you call that in um, showstopper? Like you come at the at the right time. So all good. So uh, we just had a background from Eileen and Jan on uh, the respective projects, Ginsep and uh, Asia Berlin, and what NPAC does. And my follow up question was on uh, delegation trips and startup communities. So uh, when you organize a lot of these activities, you know, suddenly you see something is happening and then after a point, you really don't know how to continue the relationship after a point because this is a complaint that startups talk about a lot uh, when they talk about problems that they don't know how to measure the success or how to measure uh, or, you know, how to keep engaged with you. So uh, probably, Jan, you can throw some light on it that how do you build a startup ecosystem in the long run that is surviving also with your help, but also on its own once you have introduced people or got, got people together? Yeah, I think my connection is a bit wobbly. I'm not sure if it is on my end. It looks a bit like. Okay. Um, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, um, essentially, what what we're trying, what we're trying to do to create sustainability um, for for every individual business as much as for for the ecosystems is is to put things on time. So to to over time, and 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 that's and that's something that that you would usually do through net networks, and therefore networking activities or network. Building components. So, as Eileen mentioned, um, the Ginset ambassadors. Well, we have with Asia Berlin something similar. We have the Asia Berlin ambassadors, and 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 the one angle of that is, of course, they are knowledge keepers. So, 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 um, 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 uh, high network people that can help. But, uh, but then they are also. But there's also a point of having um, central nodes in the network that that, that are active, and and kind of like that. That's we think it always in concentric circles so there, there's like kind of like a, a small core of organizations and individuals that are highly active in keeping the infrastructure alive and then and then you have um, um other actors that are uh, topic related um are are um joining um joining the network or joining activities within the network and that and kind of like through this you have like um 
like a, a stable network structure. And then if 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 players come like startups uh, that want to enter markets, then then you plug them into the network. Yeah. Um, so talking of ambassadors, we have one Asia Bolin ambassador right here, Karina, joining us from uh, Hong Kong, and she's the founder of W Hub and Angel Hub. And um, probably you can also talk a bit about, you know, the, the, your two uh, initiatives and what you do through this. But I think your view personally for me for, is very relevant for this panel because neither you are totally uh, government or public funded or, you know, neither you are an NGO, but you are, you are working with all of this and then you have your own initiative. So the... According to you, when a startup is looking at expanding globally or cross-border, what are the options they should really look at, you know, in terms of reaching out to different partners? And what are your tips um, for the challenges that they might face? And please also explain your work with WHUB and Angel Hub. And I have asked too many questions in one question. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Let me actually structure again. Uh, sorry for being in the in the wrong session beforehand. Glad to be with you guys. Um, so very briefly, W Hub, Angel Hub, two platforms, but really united by the same mission and passion, which is helping startups and you know the the founding teams to grow and scale their business. Uh, obviously in their own home markets, but as you mentioned as well, and overseas. We're headquartered out of Hong Kong. It is a very very a uh, small country uh, or special administrative region with 7 million people. So people here or startups here anyway have this this vision from day one on, on scaling overseas. Uh, but since our ecosystem has matured, you know, I always say we proudly gave birth to now 15 unicorns. We also welcome more startups from overseas. And I can talk a little bit um, about, you know, what, what we do to help. Um, and I think one of the tips would be is to really connect with, with networks that, you know, are either community builders or power connectors. That's actually what we say we are with, with WLP. You know, we showcase startups at the ecosystem, draw more resources in, and then make these connections happen. So help startups to recruit, help startups to have a presence, and co-create corporate startup co-innovation programs, run our own webinars, full-fledged conference. Um, and uh, an angel app is then really just concentrating on the fundraising. So we're here the um, only licensed uh, crowdfunding platform in um, in Hong Kong and in, in, in the region. Um, and we have our own fund, so we also invest. We can provide that full-fledged service um, to you as a startup to, to welcome you and have really soft landing programs. I think one of your questions was like, what do you specifically do? So we have soft landing packages for you to come overseas. We arguably with, with W have already give you an opportunity to be in Hong Kong digitally, virtually without being physically able to connect with the ecosystem. So you can see on the platform, it's, it's all for free. You can join the community. You can try to understand who are other fellow startups or some other people doing what you do in your home market here in a different way. You can connect and reach out. Um, we have white papers really provide, you know, companies with, with an understanding of the opportunities here. Um, we run global startup competition, our own conference, as I said, you can come and and be part of it and that networking and insight is important. I think Jan talked about it, right? I mean, you really want to reach out to um, these, these power connectors, community builders or the owners of, of the Holy Grail when it comes to information um, and, and those who are truly have a passion and, and a mission on, on doing so. You ask about some of the pitfalls, right? I think um, obviously we all heard about uh, uh, act global, but but think local. And I think the biggest pitfall over and over again is that um, you know you think you have you nailed your product market fit. Now you expand and you just you know replicate what you have been doing in your home market. And and obviously as the name suggests, it's a product market fit. And as soon as you leave your home market, you're in a different market, so there might not be exactly a fit to the solution that you develop. I mean, the good news is you don't start from scratch, but I can share one of the examples of one of our, our unicorns, logistic unicorns, from like the Uber for van, they said they expanded to Singapore um, from Hong Kong after being successful here um, with kind of like plug and play, copy paste on what they were doing very successfully here. And it miserably failed um, because as, as much Singapore really looked similar to Hong Kong, a small city and, you know, pretty much uh, in, in terms of, you know, having a high net, both individuals and, 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 and a really um, dense ecosystem, uh, completely different needs and completely different consumer needs. Um, so that's already that, right? Tailor your, your product to, um, to the consumer. But then even in terms of, you know, go-to-market strategies, who are the people who, you know, really um, hold, I don't know, 
the supply chain bottlenecks or you know how do you communicate so th there's a lot to learn uh, but i think the biggest pitfall, pitfall is always um this that you underestimate um how much you should um you really do your research or connect with people who are in the market now the good news is again in, in these in these new times you can do that digitally a lot of webinars and and, and you know even our big conference that used to be at the convention center um, is now online, right? And you can, wherever market you want to go, I'm sure there are at least a few events that are happening. And the more you also um, do your research and connect with the ecosystem, um, the more you will have certain names that pop up over and over again. It might be a co-working space that's particularly active. It might be a certain accelerator. It might be, to your point, right, um, uh, government-backed programs. Uh, but there, again, I think understanding what you really need, um, is it more like business connections? Is it more financial support? And depending on that, then you really choose um, your um, your partners and then they can be, uh, and, and, and I think that's, I'm not going to teach anything, anybody, anybody, anything new, same as in your home market, right? If you have private players that invest in you, they have skin in the game, they have stakes, so they have a different commitment. Um, if you collaborate with government organizations, they probably have certain KPIs they need to take. If you fall into them, great. If not, it's probably um, you know not the best route to go. If it's about funding support from governments, you know payment cycles are very different. They have to take that into account. So again, I mean, arguably afterwards, it's probably pretty much what you're used to from your home market. I think one last tip is um, you know some markets are um, easier for for expats or foreigners to penetrate than than others. Um, particularly in Asia. So some countries are where, where English definitely is is a second language or, you know, even like a like a second first language, so to speak, um, as, you know, would be in Singapore, Hong Kong, and in these markets. Some other markets are, are really still very, very local. Um, and then the best tip is actually to partner up with somebody who is from, from that region. So basically it's all about connections and the right connections and local connections most uh, primarily to understand uh, different markets. Okay. Yes. Thank you for reaffirming. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that's why I, I just want one, one, one shameless plug on Asia Berlin. And I think that's why that, that network is so powerful, right? Because the Asia Berlin network has identified uh, passionate community building power connectors in each of the Asian countries um, and so soft landing um, or just sharing know-how or just sharing that business connection is really powerful. Yeah, no, I think it's it's actually a very relevant point because, you know, now even in, even with me, like someone asks, OK, I want to know about Hang Hong Kong. I'm like, Karina, I want to know about India. I'm like, OK, Neha Vivek. I mean, you don't know these names, but we always have this one name that comes to our mind and people are going to tell you. And um, coming to you, Eileen, I mean, you work very closely with the Indian market and uh, India is also very uh, one of the important uh, markets for Asia Berlin. So what are some of the specific success stories that come to your mind where you have helped uh, German entrepreneurs expand into Asia or uh, sorry, India or Indian entrepreneurs, uh, you know, enter Germany? Mute. <laughs> I'm gonna unmute mute myself exactly. <laughs> so I think one of our um, success stories definitely is a startup named Cruiser. It's a Bangalore-based startup that we support to get access to the InsurTech um, accelerator in in Munich. And after the um, acceleration program, they set up their own company uh, here in Germany and um, have identified, I think, a couple of, of partners now and are pretty successful. Um, they are an InsurTech um, company. And then we have worked with a German startup called Blinken. And Blinken made headline... Um, developed a, a remote support um, um, with argumented reality for the pandemic, which was used actually in some um, Chinese hospitals um, during the pandemic. So uh, they have been part of a lot of events uh, by us, and um, they were also supported by us to get us to the uh, DNA accelerator of Bosch and in, in India, and they are now also operating in Germany and India. And then we have been also working with another startup, which is Gnostics. Um, we support them to 
join the Tata uh, Social Entrepreneur Enterprise uh, Challenge in Calcutta, um, which was opened on our request also for German startups. And then three German startups were uh, financially supported to come to India. This was still prior to the, um, to the pandemic. And um, the CEO is now in India and is uh, working um, with several Indian hospitals on clinical trials uh, for their solutions. Um, so there are many like these. Um, even after, you know, after our last startup tour, which we did in May, um, a lot of uh, talks took place afterwards. So there was one auto or automobile company which entered talks with Invest in Munich um, or Invest in Bavaria, pardon, um, to set up a, a company in, in Bavaria. Um, we also supported another startup um, to get access again to the DNA Bosch Accelerator. And after the uh, startup tour, we also connect, uh, uh, were um, approached oh, by fine. the angel network and they wanted to start investment discussion with 11 out of the 14 startups that were part of our oh. cohort that time so these are some of the success stories we we can showcase it's a long list yeah <laughs> i'm sure we'll find it on your blog as well uh but un unfortunately we are like really running out of time and there's so much to talk but but i really want to you know uh, close on a point where uh, people have something to take away from here and they can connect with you separately so if you could just give me one line a uh, rapid fire in terms of at what stage um, should startups reach out to you for help and why so let's start with <laughs> karina on WHUB, you can reach out at any stage and uh, you can find me or you go on whub.io um, and then you have an opportunity uh, to find us or just to find the information we provide for you to consider um, scaling into Asia. On Angel Hub, we're looking primarily for Series A startups um, to help them fundraise and find smart capital here in, in, in this part of the world. Um, we do a smaller part on Series C as well. So if you're a later stage company and you want to expand into Asia and you're looking for growth capital here, um, that's that's the way. And that's uh, Karina at whub.io or Karina at angelhub.io. You can put this into the chat. Wow. It would be with pleasure. <laughs> okay. And Eileen? Well, I mean... Uh... If a startup wants to expand, they have to have significant fi funding, right, and the strategy in place. So we are looking a little bit more, more uh, for mature startups that are keen to scale either to India or from India back to Germany. Um, we get a lot of a lot of other requests, but um, to really provide support, we look at this stage. And interested startups can reach out to us via our website, which is www.ginsep.co. CEO. And then our Isha Berlin <laughs> partner, uh, Impact, and also mm -hmm. Isha Berlin, Jan, what, is, what are your tips? Yeah, so, well, uh, who, are, who are we looking out for or who can we support? My, my, my answer is twofold because on the one hand, I have the Asia Berlin hat on. And, and there I would say, yes, it is similar, like Aileen described it, a bit more mature. You have to be ready in order to enter new markets. And, and to do so, it requires, uh, uh, A, the, 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 the decision to do so, then having the, the capital, the resources to, to do that successful. And entering a new market is never easy, right? So it, it will always be it will be always be a big, a big milestone, no? And, and you have to be ready to, to do so. Now, there we're happy to support you then um, in all directions. So entering from Asia in Berlin, we are currently um, um, doing a, a pilot landing pad program. So this is really for startups from Asia that want to enter the German European market via Berlin. And we and this is the first the first batch is a virtual program due to travel restrictions in place, um, but this is also planned for 2020 as a as a physical one one then so have virtual preparation but then really come to Berlin and 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 live have meetings and 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 meet the ecosystem and the people. Um, then as well as as the outbound aspect, uh, Berlin startups expanding to Asia, be it India, be it um, China, be it South Southeast Asia. So there. Um, again, be ready, be more mature, 
Um, and then our delegation trips are our first scouting, right? It's the first, it's the first step to, 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 to put your nose uh, deep in and see like, okay, is this something for us? Does it make sense? Um, and then we are also planning right now follow-up um, activities. So that would be an internationalization accelerator. So then if you take the decision, yes, we want to do it, then how, how can we support this through our network, through our activities? So that was my first answer on yeah. the Asia Berlin side. Mm -hmm. And now taking on my purely NPAC hat, then we are very open to uh, startups at all stages, also very early stage. So our programs are um, so supporting entrepreneurs in, in many world regions. There it's more depending on what is the what are the current programs that we are running and, and are there the um, applications open. Uh, you can look on the website, npac.org. Um, if, if you're coming from a certain region and, and a program seems to be interesting for you, feel free to, to apply or, or get in touch. Okay. So a lot of tips for everybody to, uh, you know, fool your inboxes. Uh, and I think one um, one tip from my side also is that we you could meet a lot of network partners at Asia Berlin Summit, which is happening uh, 4th to 10th October this year. So all markets from Asia, various satellite events. And that is somewhere where you actually start the connections that we just spoke about. And also there is Indo-German Startup Week, um, which is uh, 20th to 24th September. So these two events, if you are looking at India and Asia, are definitely a place where you will find connections and you could be a part of the success stories we spoke about today. So, um, and thank you to all the panelists to join so spontaneously. I know we came up with this like uh, quickly and all of you said yes. And um, I think there are networking rooms as well if um, you want to join there for some time and say yes to say hello to other participants. Um, and thank you from my side. So have a great day ahead. Thank you for hosting, Diksha. Thank you. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you, Diksha. Great job.